Hello, my name is Danny. Welcome to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you some tips for building confidence. Very quickly, I'd like to share a little bit more about me and why I really want to address this episode. If you're brand new to my channel, you probably don't know that I have grown up competing in pageants. In fact, I competed at Miss USA, but in addition to that, I used to work in Los Angeles as a model. So two industries where confidence is going to play a really big role in your success, but also two places that your confidence can really really be tested. So I want to share with you the things that have worked for me in building my own confidence and what that journey has looked like and some actionable steps that you can take if this is something that you want to change and invest in for yourself. One of the first things that I noticed in terms of building my confidence from the inside was that how I carried myself on the outside was a reflection of what was going on in here. And Throughout my journey within pageantry, I started devoting more and more time to working out in the gym. And initially I did this because I wanted to look good during the swimsuit competition because I wanted to be competition ready. But what I found though is that the way that we present ourselves on the outside is, as I mentioned, this reflection of how I was feeling on the inside. And that's why I think that it's not everything, but it is one of those first steps that you can take towards feeling better and building that confidence is taking pride in your physical appearance. And we've also seen too, that when people become depressed or they stop caring, that oftentimes they will neglect their physical appearance or hygiene. So we can kind of see this going both ways. And I think that when you change the way that you dress or do your hair or maybe do your makeup or whatever it is that's gonna make you feel better about yourself, when we make those outer changes, that starts to affect how we can feel on the inside. And to me, they're really connected. It's like this circle, one is going to affect the other. This is why I think that when we work on improving how we look on the outside and whatever that version of beauty is to us or whatever that version of confidence looks like to us, when we can reflect that on the outside, we're also gonna start feeling it on the inside as well. Next, I wanna encourage you to try new things. Try new things that scare you and that push you outside of your comfort zone because it's so true what people say when we push ourselves beyond our comfort zone we're going to learn new things about ourselves we may learn a new skill and we're going to realize that it's not so scary to try new things and that's going to help actually to build up some courage within us to go after whatever we want in life and as we've seen people who are confident are the ones that are going after their dreams they're the ones who have this belief in themselves in their value and in your worth and i think that one of the ways we can develop that that is by trying new things. So in my case years ago, that was pageantry. Pageantry was putting me in a place that made me feel uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable speaking with someone one-on-one. -on -one. I was uncomfortable sharing about myself in front of a room of 200 people. I was uncomfortable and didn't feel the best about myself when I was walking across stage in a gown. I felt very awkward in those moments, but as I did it more and more and more, I started to feel so much better about myself and confident in those things. So for me, it was pageants. For you, it could be anything else. It could be a hobby. It could be a sport. But really anything that's pushing you beyond what you're used to is something that you're gonna get value from in one way or another. You're gonna learn new things, but it does also really foster that sense of courage and that courage is gonna help to build that confidence as well. So whatever it is, keep going for it. And I'll say that I noticed in my personal life that as I built up that courage to try new things, that it became easier and easier for me to be the one that was first to raise their hand in class or the first person to volunteer. And that was something I was never comfortable doing in the past, but I'm really glad that I've been able to work through that and move past that by trying out new things. Mental health and mindset are huge when it comes to confidence. And I know saying that out loud, you might think this is a no brainer, but I really wanna ask you right now, have you checked on you? What have you done to check in with yourself to see where you are with your mind? And sometimes this could mean talking to friends, this could mean talking to family members, or maybe a mental health professional. This is gonna look different for every single person. For me, changing my confidence mindset was not just about the physical or how I felt about myself, but for me, it was about changing my mindset and the way I approached anything and everything in life. 
the way I started out on this particular journey of mindset and how I perceived the world was when I was at a really low place and I felt very helpless and I felt that nothing could be done to change my circumstances. And then I had this idea that there were people out there in the world that were achieving their dreams and doing great things and that they didn't have to come from a background where they grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth. And, and to me, that had been such a mental obstacle. So I wanted to learn more about these people who had overcome socioeconomic barriers and challenges. And so without many resources myself, I would walk to the library and I would check out books on self-help and on financial financial literacy and those things started to change the way I looked at everything and viewed at everything and it changed the realm of possibility for me and it built up my confidence to do things I wouldn't have done in the past or before. Things like investing, starting a retirement account. You see, confidence doesn't just have to do with how we perceive our physical self. It Confidence is going to carry over into every area of our life and it's going to affect how we process the world around us and how we act and how we make choices. And so that's why I think that a focus, of course, on mental health is essential, but also on mindset and the way that you're viewing things. So be very protective of your mind, who you're surrounding yourself with and what you're allowing to come into it. Positive affirmations can be so powerful. Positive affirmations are something I still use today. In fact, I have a list, I have a free list if you want it, and you can download it, it's in the description below if you wanna read some of my favorite positive affirmations just to get you started in these things. But during my time in pageantry, when I was really conflicted about my views about myself and my own self-confidence, I decided to start making changes and saying these little words of affirmation to myself. And back then that meant claiming things like the title that I wanted at that moment. I would say, I am Miss Montana USA every morning. And I would say that until it didn't feel like I was faking it, until I felt so authentic about it. And that made me feel so much better when I actually showed up during competition. But not only did it help there, I used it to get better at different skills as well. I used to be terrible terrified of interviewing one-on-one -on -one with people, I would, I would shake, my mouth would be so dry. And so I said, I need to shift the mindset on that and I need to feel good about it. So I started using positive affirmations to tell myself that I loved the interview competition, that it was my strongest area of competition, that I was a talented and skillful speaker. And at first those things did not feel authentic. It took me quite some time to feel confident about these things, but those daily reminders of positive Positive affirmation they reminded me to work on these skills but also that I was capable of growth and I was capable of changing these things and actually mastering them the last thing we'll touch on is positive self-talk that's that little voice that we hear in our head all day and sometimes the way that we speak to ourselves is not very kind that might be because we're listening to the way that others have spoken about us and we're internalizing that when someone says that we're a failure or that we're worthless we start telling ourselves that we're a failure and we're worthless. And sometimes that little voice comes from our insecurities in life. It can come from the things that make us feel uncomfortable. Maybe somebody's mentioned it or commented on something that you feel is a weakness in the past. So once again, you've internalized that. Now those insecurities are always on your mind. You're focusing on these perceived weaknesses instead of the things that you're so great at and that you're so wonderful at. And so one thing I think is really important is whenever you do hear that very negative voice that comes in, and it could be from you, it could be from someone else, to start replacing that negativity with positivity. Now positivity isn't everything in life, but it's a lot better than being negative. And it's gonna help you to open up your mind and see yourself for who you are and what you have to give and what you have to offer. And it's gonna help to increase that internal value that you should feel in your heart about yourself. When you hear someone say something negative about you, something that hurts you, say, no, I'm not. I'm not that thing. Because you don't get to decide who I am. I get to decide that. And that all starts with the way that we talk to ourselves and what we tell ourselves that we are. So whenever somebody does say something negative that hurts you, that bothers you, that makes you feel less confident in yourself, you need to replace those negative words 
Instead, you need to be focusing on the things that you know to be true about yourself, the beautiful things that those who truly love you recognize and see in you. And one thing you have to remember about this is this has to be a conscious choice. I used to tell myself all the time that I couldn't do something when it came to pageantry, when it came to onstage performances, because Every time I had competed in the past, my evening gown score was always low. So in my head, I listened to what other people said about me. I told myself that I'm not good at the evening gown competition and I said it over and over. And then I realized there's something wrong with that. How am I ever gonna be good at evening gown if I just kept telling myself that I was terrible at it? So instead, every time that I told myself that I was bad at it or I felt that thought creeping in, I would consciously make the choice to say, no, I'm not. I am great at this. I am poised. I am confident on stage. I do carry myself with elegance. I started replacing all those negative things that I would say about myself and I would have to encourage myself. And that is something so many of us have to do, especially if you're in a place where you aren't surrounded by others who are going to do it for you. Don't rely on others to encourage you. Sometimes that's not going to be an option in your life. So you have to take that initiative and you need to start encouraging yourself. These are the things that really helped me in my confidence journey. And I say journey because it's not a destination. This isn't something that you gain and you're always gonna have it. This is gonna be something that needs continual work. And when I say work, I mean work. But keep on working so that you can see progress. Keep on investing in yourself to build that self-confidence. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you want to see next on the channel. I hope you're subscribed so that I can see you next time.